next symbol we're going to look at is the olive branch. You see it here in the Eagle's Talon. You see it all over the American money. You're probably familiar with it with the United Nations symbol, which is that globe surrounded by that web, that grid, or that matrix, and then the two olive branches on either side, which if you really want to know what they mean symbolically when it's two like that on either side, it's talking about Ephraim and Manasseh, those two horns that has brought us to this point that bringing about of this new order, this new world order, of which is really the destruction of Christianity, getting rid of anything to do with the philosophy and the saving grace of Jesus Christ, bringing about this new order, the rise of the fallen prince upon this world. And that is their main objective. When we see this connection that the olive branch has to the symbol of this eagle, we're going to find out that everything we saw scripturally with the eagle was not any coincidence that this olive branch is going to keep on bringing us down that same line of sight, the same understanding to this blueprint of control that we see this symbol is really all about. To do that, you need to understand chapter 11 of the book of Romans because that's where we're going to get our main understanding of what this torn olive branch means. The climate here of chapter 11 is, but spiritual Israel is finding salvation. And that really means that you can't do enough physical works to get you through the gates of heaven. It's not a physical works thing. It's not the physical things that you do or don't do that get you through heaven. It's the work that Jesus Christ has done. It's the saving grace and believing in the way that Christ has already pre-prepared. This world has been under deception much longer than before Christ entered into the physical, but it was the same salvation that was offered to the world even before Christ came into the physical. We see the connections in some of the scriptures in the Old Testament and even back into the book of Enoch. It's the same grace. It's always been there. Whether you knew about it or not, when you pass from mortal death and go to the other side, that is what you encounter, that saving grace and that mercy, and then you are judged in righteousness. So the other side, this blinded national Israel is judicially blinded. We're talking about this remnant of Israel, the material false shepherd Israel that's been influenced by the well, that's been influenced by the Apsu, by the occult, and by the idols. They're blinded. They believe they have to usher in their kingdom by works, by physical works, by the sacrifice that we're about to see take place. And we all understand that it's by grace. That all you have to do is believe and that Jesus Christ is going to take care of the spiritual kingdom for us. Well, the fallen prince of this world, he can't bring it about. He has to trick mankind into bringing it about for him because he, can, because he knows mankind has free will. So he has blinded and deceived the very deceivers themselves. And now they are going about trying to bring about this kingdom age by physical works when it's absolutely contrary to the spiritual saving grace of Jesus Christ, which is a spiritual kingdom that we're going to inhabit, that we're going to inherit. So we see here that their eyes are blinded. This is false nation witness Israel, the false shepherds that we're talking about being led by Ephraim and Manasseh, but more importantly, Ephraim. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all way. So you find out that this Israel these nations that are really hiding their identity that they believe themselves to be the descendants of one of the lost tribes of Israel has really been leading the nations into a direction of the New World Order. And it's really the blind leading the blind. All right? And then as we move down here, I wish I had more time to go into these scriptures. We find out here in verse 20, it begins to talk about this olive branch and why this olive branch was torn away. So I want to give this the right amount of time that I could. So maybe I'll stop the video here and I'll start reading from verse 15. It's not going to take that long. It's going to really open up what this torn olive branch is all about. I'll be back.